In this video, we'll look at whether PBR3, that's phosphorus tribromide, is polar or nonpolar. So let's first take a look at the electronegativity difference between phosphorus and bromine. So we have phosphorus here. Phosphorus is 2.19. Bromine is 2.96. So the difference in electronegativity, it's less than 2.0, but it's greater than 0 0.5. So since it's greater than 0 0.5, this bond between the phosphorus and the bromine, it's a polar bond. Back at our Lewis structure, what that means is these two electrons, this pair of electrons right here that's shared between the phosphorus and the bromine, because bromine's more electronegative, those electrons, they'll spend more time around the bromine atom. That makes this a polar bond. But to understand whether the entire molecule, the PBR3 molecule, is polar or nonpolar, we need to look at the molecular geometry how these atoms, each of the bromine atoms, these three atoms here, and this lone pair, they spread out to give the molecular geometry for PBR3. Let's look at that. So the purple, that'll be our phosphorus. Then we put three bromines, one, two. You can see they're spreading out to be as far away as they can from each other. Add the third one, three, and we get this planar molecular geometry where they're all spread out in a plane. But we still have that lone pair, and that lone pair, it occupies space. So we add our lone pair here, and it pushes these bromine atoms down. So now we have an asymmetrical molecule. It's not a symmetrical molecule. The bromines are down here. Then we have this lone pair up here. Back to our Lewis structure. Since the phosphorus-bromine bond is polar and the molecule is asymmetrical, overall we'll have a polar molecule for PBR3. This is Dr. B answering the question whether PBR3 is a polar molecule. It is a polar molecule, and the bonds also between P and Br, they're polar as well. Thanks for watching.